Hi everyone. The nuclear ship Savannah, launched on July 21, 1959, was the first nuclear-powered merchant ship. Constructed in the late 1950s, the vessel incurred a total cost of $46.9 million, encompassing a $28.3 million investment in a nuclear reactor and fuel core. Funded by various United States government agencies, the Savannah served as a demonstration project to showcase the potential applications of nuclear energy. Named in homage to the SS Savannah, the initial steamship to traverse the Atlantic Ocean, this vessel operated from 1962 to 1972, representing one of only four nuclear-powered cargo ships ever constructed. The Soviet icebreaker Lenin, launched on December 5, 1957, preceded the NS Savannah as the first nuclear-powered civilian ship. In 1955, President Dwight D. Eisenhower put forth a proposal for the construction of a nuclear-powered merchant ship, intended to serve as a showcase for his Atoms for Peace initiative. The following year, the United States Congress granted authorization for the joint development of the Savannah, involving the Atomic Energy Commission, the Maritime Administration, and the Department of Commerce. Designed by George G. Sharp, Inc., based in New York City, the vessel had its keel laid down by the New York Shipbuilding Corporation in Camden, New Jersey. Babcock and Wilcox manufactured her nuclear reactor. The design of the ship was based on the Liberty cargo ship design. The ship's hull was made of steel, and the reactor was installed in a specially designed compartment. George G. Sharp Incorporated, a distinguished naval architecture firm established in New York City in 1920, handled the entire design of Savannah, excluding the Babcock and Wilcox nuclear reactor. Featuring as the sixth large ship with fin stabilizers, the design aimed to enhance reactor safety and improve passenger comfort. Given that the reactor occupied the ship's central space and necessitated unobstructed overhead crane access during refueling, the superstructure was positioned towards the stern of the hull. The raked, teardrop-shaped superstructure was specifically crafted by Jack Heaney and Associates of Wilton, Connecticut, ship design consultants working with George G. Sharp. This design aimed for a futuristic aesthetic, adorned with stylized atom graphics on both sides. Heaney was responsible for the interiors, characterized by sleek, modern atomic age styling. The construction process took over two years to complete. One of the biggest challenges was the safety of the nuclear reactor. Another challenge was the cost of the project. The ship was officially christened by U.S. First Lady Mamie Eisenhower during the launching ceremony on July 21, 1959. The construction of the Ness was a significant event. It was the first time that a nuclear reactor had been installed in a commercial ship. The nuclear ship Savannah was a very successful ship. It operated for over 10 years and traveled over 500,000 miles. Savannah boasts dimensions of 596 feet 6 inches in length and 78 feet in beam, accompanied by a loaded draft of 29 feet 6 inches and a loaded displacement of 19,800 tons. The ship's structure includes seven cargo holds, a reactor compartment, and a machinery compartment, forming a total of nine watertight compartments. The vessel features three complete decks, with the reactor compartment strategically positioned towards the ship's center. The superstructure is situated just aft of the reactor's top to facilitate the refueling process. The nuclear ship Savannah was powered by a pressurized water reactor PWR, which is a type of nuclear reactor commonly used for naval propulsion and electricity generation. The PWR operates by using enriched uranium fuel to produce heat through nuclear fission. This heat is used to generate steam, which drives turbines connected to a propeller, thereby providing propulsion for the ship. 
The fuel used in the reactor of the Savannah was enriched uranium, in the form of uranium oxide pellets stacked inside metal fuel rods. These fuel rods are arranged in a core within the reactor. The uranium fuel rods are securely stored within the reactor's fuel assemblies. These assemblies are designed to withstand the high temperatures and pressures generated during reactor operation. Additionally, spent fuel rods, which have been depleted of much of their uranium, are stored in specially designed pools or dry storage containers on board the ship for later disposal. The operation of a nuclear reactor, including the one on board the Savannah, requires stringent safety measures to prevent accidents and mitigate their consequences. These safety measures include redundant control systems, emergency shutdown procedures, and containment structures designed to prevent the release of radioactive materials in the event of a reactor malfunction. Despite these safety precautions, nuclear propulsion does carry inherent risks, including the potential for reactor accidents, radiation exposure to personnel, and environmental contamination in the event of a catastrophic failure. Overall, while nuclear propulsion offers numerous advantages such as efficiency and long-range capabilities, it also requires careful management and oversight to ensure the safety of the vessel, its crew, and the environment. The Savannah's cargo capacity was restricted to 8,500 short tons of freight within 652,000 cubic feet, significantly less than many of her competitors. Loading the forward holds proved laborious due to her streamlined hull, posing a significant disadvantage as ports increasingly automated their operations. Moreover, her crew size exceeded that of comparable oil-fired ships by a third, necessitating special training beyond conventional maritime licenses. A labor dispute arose over pay discrepancies between deck officers and nuclear engineering officers. Due to her design limitations, training mandates, and increased crew size, Savannah incurred approximately two million U.S. dollars more annually in operating subsidies compared to a similarly sized Mariner-class ship with a conventional oil-fired steam plant. In a cost-saving measure, the Maritime Administration retired Savannah from service in 1971, a decision rationalized by fuel oil priced at 20 US dollars per ton. However, by 1974, with fuel oil costing $80 per ton, Savannah's operating expenses would have equaled those of a conventional cargo ship. After being christened on July 21, 1959, it took over two and a half years to complete the installation of the reactor and conduct initial trials. Following this, the ship was temporarily powered by oil-fired engines and moved to Yorktown, Virginia, where the reactor was started and underwent testing. Full reactor power was achieved in April 1962. Savannah was formally delivered on May 1, 1962, to the Maritime Administration and handed over to her operators, the state's marine lines. Embarking on her maiden voyage on August 20, 1962, Savannah engaged in demonstrations, initially sailing to her namesake port, Savannah. During this voyage, a malfunctioning instrument triggered a reactor shutdown, inaccurately reported as a major accident by the press. Continuing her journey, she traversed the Panama Canal and visited Hawaii and ports along the west coast of the United States, captivating visitors for three weeks at the Century 21 Exposition in Seattle. By early 1963, she reached Galveston, Texas, for repairs and system checks. In 1964, Savannah commenced a tour of U.S. Gulf and East Coast ports. During the summer, she crossed the Atlantic for the first time, visiting Bremerhaven, Hamburg, Rotterdam, Dublin, and Southampton, attracting 150,000 visitors during this tour. Until 1965, Savannah operated as a passenger cargo liner, carrying a total of 848 passengers along with 4,800 short tons of cargo. After discontinuing passenger service, 
the ship was converted to an all-cargo vessel, with 1,800 tons of ballast removed and passenger spaces closed. Operating for three years and covering 350,000 nautical miles, Savannah returned to Galveston for refueling in 1968. Four of the 32 fuel assemblies were replaced, and the remaining units were rearranged to optimize fuel usage. She resumed service until the end of 1971, when she was deactivated. Subsequently, Savannah was acquired by the city of Savannah and docked at the end of River Street, with plans to transform her into a floating hotel. However, investors could not be secured for the project. In 1981, Savannah was acquired through a bareboat charter arrangement for exhibition at the Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum near Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Despite the museum's operational use of the vessel, ownership of Savannah remained with the Maritime Administration. Consequently, the Patriots Point Development Authority was designated a co-licensee for the ship's reactor, necessitating periodic radiological inspections to uphold its safety standards. Once open for public viewing, visitors had the opportunity to explore various sections of the ship, including its cargo holds, engine room, staterooms, passenger areas, and decks. Although the museum initially planned to refurbish and enhance the ship's public spaces, these intentions did not come to fruition, and Savannah failed to attract significant visitors. Subsequently, the ship was relocated from the museum and underwent dry docking in Baltimore, Maryland, in 1994 for repairs. Following this, Savannah was transferred to the James River Merchant Marine Reserve Fleet near Newport News, Virginia. On December 4, 2023, the Maritime Administration of the Department of Transportation announced the decommissioning of the nuclear power plant aboard the nuclear ship Savannah in the Federal Register. Recognized for its historical significance, Savannah was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on November 14, 1982, and designated a National Historic Landmark on July 17, 1991. Notably, it stands as one of the most prominent and intact examples of the Atoms for Peace program, meriting its designation as a National Historic Landmark in advance of the standard 50-year age requirement due to its exceptional national significance. The NS Savannah is referenced in Tom Clancy's novel The Hunt for Red October. In the film, the ship is used as a backdrop for a meeting between two characters. Thanks for watching.